Hello students, today we are going to begin a new chapter that is chapter 10, Gravitation. And in this module, we shall study discovery of gravity and Newton's law of gravitation. We have, we can see the, they are racing towards earth. The question is why it's happening. The reason is gravity. And we can't think of someone skipping without gravity. Even a simple task like drinking water wouldn't have been possible without gravity. So the question is how actually gravity was discovered. So the story goes like this. One day Newton was relaxing under an apple tree and suddenly an apple fell on his head. So he began to analyze the reason behind it. So he thought further that there must be a force that pulls an apple towards the center of earth and this is how the gravity was discovered. So later on he thought that gravity is not something or gravitational pull is not something confined or limited to an apple and an earth. In fact, it is something that influences the entire universe. Gravitational force acts between any two bodies and for that we take in consideration of a body A and another body B. So, so if there are two bodies A and B, there is a force of attraction between them as we can see. Now, this is absurd but it goes like this. If we take in consideration of an object like a man and a car, so if a man is walking towards car, he must be attracted. The reason is it's, there is a force of attraction between them. And similarly, if we take in consideration of two planets, an Earth and any other planet, if planets are around Earth, they must be attracted towards each other as there is a force of attraction. But do we see it happening? Answer is no. So let's see why. For that, let's begin with Newton's law of gravitation. The law says every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force. So here we can see the nature of force is attraction. Further, which is directly proportional to the product of their masses. And here, directly proportional stands for if one quantity increases, other quantity increases in proportion. Moving further, it says, and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between their center. And here, inversely proportional stands for if one quantity increases, the other quantity decreases in proportion. Let us consider two objects and having mass m1 and m2 as we can see such that they are separated at a distance r from the line joining the center of mass and so there is a force of attraction between them. Now this force of attraction as we discussed earlier is f is proportional to m1 into m2. So this is our equation 1. So let us suppose if we have an object of mass m1 and there is another object that is earth having mass m2 and f is proportional to m1 into m2 and as a result the man is being pulled towards the center of earth. If we consider a car and a man, so there is a force of attraction but when we consider the force of attraction between an earth and a man and the force of attraction that exists between a car and a man. so the force of attraction between a man and a car is negligible in comparison to the force of attraction between us and earth and as a result we don't get attracted towards the things around us. Moving ahead further, so the second segment of the law says that f is inversely proportional to the square of distance and we consider it as equation 2. So how many equations we have? One is f is proportional to m1 into m2 which is directly proportional and second is f is inversely proportional to r square. That means if we consider two objects a and b such that the distance between them is less so the force of attraction will be more. Just opposite if we increase the distance between them what will happen? The force of attraction will decrease. Moving ahead further so when we join both the equations that is f is proportional to m1 into m2 and f is inversely proportional to r square. 
So we get f is proportional to m1 into m2 upon r square. And when we remove the sign of proportionality, we write g. So the equation becomes f is equal to g m1 into m2 upon r square. And here g stands for universal gravitational constant. So here, if we consider there are two objects, m1 and m2, such that m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 1 kg and the distance between them is equal to 1 meter. So the formula that we have is f is equal to g m1 into m2 upon r square and if we place the value of m1 is equal to m2 that is equal to 1 kg and in place of distance if we write 1 meter we write f is equal to g 1 into 1 upon 1 square and when we solve it further we will get f is equal to g. So how exactly we can define universal gravitational constant in terms of force? So here is the definition. It says that universal constant of gravitation is the force of attraction between two unit masses placed at unit distance apart from each other. Thank you.